Grammar for IELTS. I hope you guys are well. That's the title for today's live. So let me just bring in my guest. Hope you guys are well. Amelia. So I'm just inviting her right now. Okay. Oh, there she is. Hello. Can you Hi. hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Hi, how are you doing? How are you doing, Amelia? I'm all right. So nice to be here with you, as yeah, always. <laughs> it's always a pleasure. Right, so this is basically screaming out obvious stuff, grammar. I mean, you kind of expect everybody to know it since childhood. So what's going on? Mm, I think um, there, is a, there are a lot of misconceptions about uh, grammar for IELTS and um, and I come from that kind of tradition. Uh, when I was at school, if you made three grammatical mistakes, that meant a fail. Um, right. And mm. it's not like that in IELTS. Uh, so that's one thing that I want to <laughs> talk about straight from the beginning. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not about nobody's kind of ticking boxes. And um, Yes, it is about um, what we call error density. So the fewer mistakes you make, the better for you. But there is a catch. And the oh, catch okay. is... <laughs> the catch I get worried. Is... <laughs> Every time you I get worried because I feel like I'm about to do the test and then you say something. So what's the catch? <laughs> the catch <laughs> is that uh, it kind of works against us because... Uh, I think it's human nature. If we want to make fewer mistakes in whatever we're doing, yeah. then we will sort of lower our performance. We will play safe. Oh, and so so what do you mean by testing grammar? I mean, is it capital letters, full stops, semicolons? Is it as obvious as that? Um, Yes, punctuation is an important part of it, but it's also about making sure that your verbs are in correct form, for example, one oh, of the, right. the, the biggies in, in, in English. Um, it is, so it's not just about correctness. It's not just about you being accurate. It's also about the range of grammatical structures you're using. And this is where it kind of goes against our nature, because if yeah. we want to make fewer mistakes, we'll play it safe. Um, this means that uh, in our performance, it will feel like we're we've gone two years back, you know, like um, two levels, da levels down to what we are actually performing at. So that's one of the things to, to understand. It's not just about how many mistakes we've made or how many mistakes we've avoided. It's also about the variety of grammatical structures we're using. So what, what kind of things do I need to cover? So, for example, I'm about to, I've booked my test mm -hmm. in six months down the line. So what kind of grammar should I be covering for that exam? So definitely to make sure that you have your basics covered. So uh, make sure that you're confidently using, for example, the past forms of the verbs, uh, especially the irregular ones that you know how to, you're, you've, um, you're confident um, uh, in the way you use uh, the past simple tense or the present perfect tense or past perfect tense, all that. Okay. And so it's, it's about the complexity of structures as well. Uh, so um, complex sentence structures, things like relative clauses. So okay. um, the uh, woman who lives next door is my best friend. Uh, okay. Instead of giving two sentences, the woman, there is a woman who lives okay. next door and the woman who lives next door is my best friend. So yeah. learning how to put simple structures together to make them uh, something a little bit more, turn them into something more complex. So uh, using, is it using connectives? It is connectives, definitely. Okay. Uh, so okay. learning to organize text and learning to link um, and also avoiding repetition. And a lot of that is th done thanks to grammar. Most of my students think, okay, if I need to paraphrase, paraphrase is the, the word in IELTS. Um, I need to learn how to replace words with their synonyms. 
um, a good paraphrase will also be done through your skillful use of different grammatical structures. And this is where a um, good paraphrase happens, really. It's not about just kind of translating one word for another as they come in, a, in the original sentence, okay. if that Sorry. makes sense. So phone just went off. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. Um, so number one is future past, uh, future present and past. Number two is using the connectives in the right order. And the third thing which you said was, uh, what was the third thing that you said? Complex sentence structures, passive forms, um, learning to paraphrase. All oh, paraphrasing. Okay. Well, that wouldn't be in the writing exam, would it? Would it be in the reading exam? For paraphrasing? Um, uh, paraphrase is tested, uh, is something that we can show, uh, we can use sort of passively and actively. So um, uh, we do use it when uh, reading and listening. So, uh, for example, to make sense and to connect what we hear or what we read with what we have okay. in the question. Um, right, right. But uh, we also use paraphrase when speaking and writing because uh, we want to say something, we forget one word, we keep going by paraphrasing what we had in our head into mm. something else. It is about not repeating the question, um, okay. both okay. in so the writing the exam the as in the speaking. Yes, so if you ask me, uh, what do you do for a living? I, I will not say, well, uh, what I do for a living is... Uh, right, so um, don't reiterate the question. No, no. If anything, you need to paraphrase it. So, you know, paraphrasing a question is one of the ways yeah. of, you know, um, of communicating successfully. Yes, somebody says something to us and then we check if we understand and it's best done if we will, if we paraphrase what they're saying, right? So... Um, yeah, uh, in terms of um, what did I want to say, I think the most important thing is to remember that it's both uh, accuracy and range that we need to take care of. So a variety of structures as well as their correctness. Let's say the um, band seven yeah. will be a flexible and kind of confident use of complex sentence structures uh, with um, a much lower error density. Okay. So um, fewer mistakes. Yeah. Because what it is, uh, sorry, I'm just disturbing in the middle, Amelia. What sure. it is is that for, for nursing, for masters in nursing, there's a lot of students who'd like to do nursing as a master's because they're a graduate and they want to do a three-year master's course and IELTS is required. So what you're saying is that you need to have all of those things with low uh, with low, with very few faults, so you need to be able to do all of those for level seven. What about other courses which requires a six? So, how much accuracy would you need for that? Um, I think one of the things to 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 remember, and you can like totally relax. Even band nine will allow okay. some mistakes. Okay. Okay. So it does not mean that band nine is some kind of. Um, Unachievable for unachievable perfection. Okay. Um, so at band six, um, you know, obviously we will strive to do the best we can. And so I will not tell you how many mistakes you can make. But um, um, yes, some mistakes will happen at band six. But at the same time, there will be uh, more complex uh, grammatical structure, something more advanced happening uh, more than in band five. So band five mm -hmm. is like more like, okay, I know something a little bit more complex and I'm trying it out and I do it pretty well like I'm not afraid to try it so band six is definitely about variety and also at the same time um, not making those silly mistakes that uh, a person let's say at band three or four would make so mm -hmm. have those verb forms covered for example okay. make sure there is a subject verb agreement done properly 
And, so and how would I? How, so how would I know? How can I predict myself whether I am I am level five or six or seven? How can I predict myself? Um, there, there. Are, I guess there are a few tests online that you can do that will tell you. Uh, basically, IELTS is mapped against the European framework. Okay. And so. Um, most of the gram grammar tests will um, tell you whether you're, let's say, elementary, intermediate, upper intermediate, mm -hmm. advanced. Mm -hmm. So they will use that terminology, but it can be easily mapped against IELTS. So I would say band six student is a good upper intermediate student. Okay. Band six is upper intermediate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right, and, and then uh, there is a huge jump between upper intermediate and advanced, yes, but and that's advanced. a different story. Yes. yes. Brilliant. So, how could I practice? You said that uh, it's good to practice. How would I practice my grammar? Um, one of the best sources I can recommend, sort of in a chat, where I don't have to show you uh, uh, the links, and um, I will be happy to post them uh, after Beautiful. the call. Um, but uh, BBC Learning English uh, has a whole grammar section. So there is a lot and enough for you to keep you busy for several weeks with grammar. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing to do would be to consider, uh, I don't know, borrowing from your local library or investing in a book such as uh, Michael Vince um, and then uh, First Certificate Language. Uh, practice or IELTS language practice. Uh, Michael Vince, um, I, I do uh, love those books. They do have a lot of paraphrase. So um, they, are, they are amazing in that sense. Um, um, and here's the thing. I, I think um, nowadays um, we, we don't have that many language schools uh, offering courses and, and so on. But it, it is a good idea to work with the teacher because at the end of the day, we can learn. But if there is nobody to help us, to correct us, to give us feedback, mm -hmm. then uh, we may be just going around in circles, exactly. repeating the same mistakes, etc. So it's good to, to, uh, to keep, keep that in check, I guess. Brilliant. And I'm sure the BBC resource is free of charge. So you just yeah. Google it and you can find it. Brilliant. And you, you are a big Michael Vince fan. You have actually mentioned his books. Yes. Yes. I'll write in the caption. <laughs> yes. Uh, Michael Vince, simply because uh, he, he knows he's big on paraphrase. So there is a lot oh. of paraphrase going on. So, okay. um, for example, you can practice, you know, certain grammatical points within each unit. And then uh, there is a lot of paraphrase that will be allowing you to, to practice that grammar point um, uh, you know, that you're, you're concentrating on. So it's not like everything thrown in together. It's like um, he, he, it's, it's a brilliant resource. I think. You, you know what, Amelia, you've actually touched on a very, very important point, which I don't know. Students tell me, we've got three people watching, you could let me know. Basically, paraphrasing, even after you've done the test, you actually need it for when you go to university, when you write up your assignments. Because some universities, let's say DeMontfort University, I've got one student who's studying engineering management. He's doing his assignments right now. And I don't know if it's 10% similarity is allowed or 20, I'm not, I, I can't remember. But he's, he's actually having to go to workshops for paraphrasing phrasing so it does actually help you in the long run if you if you learn in advance yes totally and uh, going back to our previous uh, live uh, whether IELTS is a your friend or enemy it's certainly your friend, it's a friend yeah. because it helps you prepare for what's coming next and yeah. I work with a student I'm working with a student right now who did IELTS with me and now I'm helping her uh, with her academic uh, writing uh, as oh, she's yeah. as she's going through her assignments, and she says, uh, "Oh my God, it's IELTS everywhere!" And yeah. I said, "Well, yeah, I told you. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, you, you don't do it just for IELTS, and and also the ability to paraphrase makes you a successful communicator. So whether you're thinking about um, you know mm -hmm. anything that is coming up next in terms of your study at university, and anything that 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 is 
that happened in, in later future. in your life. Yeah. Yes, yes. Oh, brilliant. Well, thank you so much. I mean, there's just so much. You've actually packed it all in. I can't believe it. There's so much to learn. <laughs> Guys, you need to actually save this post because if you are doing else, these lives that Amelia's doing, she is talking from experience. She's talking from her experience with students. So she knows what she's talking about. And she's Delta qualified. If you would like to uh, contact her, you can do. Her handle is here. Somewhere. If not, I'll put it in the caption as well. Um, with regards to teachers, she is here. If you need that extra additional boost, Amelia is here for you. With regards to UK University admissions, what's it got to do with me? Why am I doing this with Amelia? The whole point of this is that UK Bright Education, we can actually help you with English language related courses, which uh, we offer at Oxford, Brighton and London, if that helps you. Oh, anywhere else around the world, there's several places. So if you'd like an offer for English language, um, you know, over the summer holidays or Easter or whenever, we can help you with that. Thank you so much, Amelia. I'm looking forward Pleasure to next always. week. I believe it's on vocabulary, isn't it? Yes, yes. So we'll oh link God. the two together. And uh, yes, the, the, there is a lot to talk about there too. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. Thank you so much. And I Thank you for having me. Next week. Okay, then take Bye. care. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys, DM me directly for like a UK university offer. You know the drill. Until next time, my friends, take care. Oh, a really good, interesting live on Friday to do with uh, learning, being a student and actually teaching while you're studying. You'll learn more about it. It's on Friday. Talk to you soon. Bye.